Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to create simple collectible items for your 2D game. So starting off, I just have a simple scene created here. I have a player using the platformer player movement script that I created for my other tutorial videos. And all I'm going to do is add a collectible coin and display it on the screen using some UI. So first thing I want to do is I'm going to create an empty game object. I'm going to change the position so it's zeroed out. I'm going to call this coin. I will go ahead and add a sprite. And I created this simple yellow square sprite in a pixel art software. So should be pretty easy to reproduce. I'm just going through here and uh, slicing it up so we only get the square for the sprite, but uh, you can do that any way you want. So I'm just calling the sprite game object sprite and I will assign my test start for the coin. So in our game view, you can't really see the coin. That's because the player is on top of it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and move it over a little bit, move it up. I know we will also need a collider. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add a box collider, set it to is trigger, and I will scale the size of the collider to fit the coin, 0.5 and 0.6 is about right. So on my coin game object, I'm gonna go ahead and add a component and I'm just gonna make a simple object script. Uh, this might not be necessary for your game, but I like to create it just so I can keep track of things easier. All right, we have it open in Visual Studio. So I'm just gonna go ahead and remove all that stuff. I'm gonna give it a public string. I'm just gonna call it ID. So if we go back to Unity, our script should update with this ID field, and I'm just gonna call it coin. The next thing we're gonna wanna add is a collect object script. I'm gonna go ahead and open that up in Visual Studio as well. Go ahead and remove everything. And now I will create a private object called this object. And inside of our wake function, I'm gonna say this object is equal to get component object. So this will just grab our object uh, script from the game object that this script is on. The next thing I wanna add is an on trigger enter 2D function. And I will add an if statement saying if collision dot compare tag is the same as player collider. And for this part to work in your Unity game, whatever collider you're using for your player, you'll have to tag it as player collider. So now I'm gonna add, if the player touches this game object, then I'm just gonna destroy the game object. And then one more thing we need to add is on our coin object, we can add a rigid body 2D and I'm just setting it to static. So if we go ahead and test this by running our game, when our player runs into the object, it disappears. Now the next thing we wanna do is add some UI saying how many coins we've collected. To do this, I'm gonna right click, go to UI, and I'm gonna import Text Mesh Pro. So now we have a canvas with a text object in there. If we scroll out, we can see this rectangle here is our canvas. This is our text object. I'm gonna zero out our text object so it's at zero, zero in the center of the screen. Going to our game view, you can see it in the center. For our canvas, 
I always change it to scale with screen size. I'm going to change the reference resolution to 1920 by 1080. I usually select expand. Admittedly, I'm not too sure how well this works. Uh, there might be a better solution out there for scaling your canvas, but this is what I do. So if we go here, we can change this to coins collected UI. I'll just set that equal to zero or set the text to zero right for right now. I'm going to go to our game view. It's okay. It's a little small, so I'll just set that to 72. Change wrapping to disabled. I always like to center the height of the text. I also like to just play around with these settings for the text. This isn't super necessary, but it's just something I like to do to make it look a little nicer. All right, so we can move this up to our top corner. We can also right click on our canvas, go to UI and add an image, and we can select our coin. I also have a material created. I'll just set native size. I'll just move, and then I just move it so it lines up with our UI. And I'm actually going to parent the text to the image. So I'm just going to steal that name, put it there. Then I'm also going to change this to score text just to keep things a little neater. All right. So now I'm going to add a new component called update UI. I can double click it to open it up in Visual Studio. I'm just going to remove all that. And I'm going to add using TM Pro so we can access the Text Mesh Pro library. I'm going to go ahead and add a private text Mesh Pro UGI, UGUI. I'm going to call this UI text. All right. And then I'm also going to add a serialized field, private game object, object prefab. and a line for a private string object ID. And in our awake function, I'm going to set UI text equal to get component of type text mesh pro UGUI. Set I am going to set object ID equal to object prefab dot get component of type object dot ID. And what this is doing is for whatever prefab we put in there, it's going to look for our object script and since our I, and since our ID is public, it'll be able to grab that ID from there. Next, I'm going to add a private void late update and I'm going to set UI text dot text equal to player prefs dot get int of object ID and then I'll just set that to string 
And the reason I put this in late update is because uh, I want to make sure everything else that we're running runs before we update the UI. Um, the UI in this case is just a little less important than uh, our player movement, for example. Uh, that way this doesn't get in the way of anything that this is trying to do. I'm also using player prefs here because it's an easy way to store uh, data locally and uh, that way I don't have to communicate between scripts. Uh, if I were to store like the score here in the player script, then I'd have to figure out a way to uh, link it to this UI script. In this way, we can just get our data from a source that everyone has access to. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. And I'm going back to our collect object script. And before we destroy the object, I am going to set player prefs dot set int of this object dot ID. And the value we're setting it to is player prefs dot get int of this object dot id plus one. This way, every time we collect a coin before it's destroyed, we get one added to the number of coins we've collected. I'll go ahead and save this script and go back to Unity. And we need an object prefab for our update UI script. So in our prefabs folder down here in assets, I'm going to go ahead and take the coin we have and just drag it in. And now that coin is a prefab. So going back to our UI text object, I'm just going to take our prefab, drag it into our object prefab slot for our update UI script and we should be ready to go. Before I do that, I'm just gonna go ahead and create an empty game object, zero out the position, I'll call it coins, and I'm just gonna add a few more coins to the scene just to make it a little more interesting. All right. Might not look the best in the world, but I added some coins. So let's go ahead and collect them. As you can see, our UI is going up, but you may have noticed that it started out at 17. That is not quite right. So I'm gonna show you how we can fix that. By going back into Visual Studio, I'm going to select our player movements, movement script uh, just because generally how I like to do things is I like to load the player once at the start of the game and during scene transitions I have a don't destroy script so this doesn't get destroyed between that, between the scenes loading. So I'm just going to add it here in its awake function which should only run once theoretically. And what I want to add is just player prefs dot delete all. And this will completely remove any player prefs that you have saved uh, on your local machine, uh, thus resetting the count for your coins. All right, so going back to our scene, if I run this again, we should start out with zero coins. And we do. And when we collect them, the score goes up. All right, but our coins look a little stale just sitting there, so let's give them some animation. To do this, I'm gonna open up our prefab for our coin object, and I'm gonna add an animator component. Down here, I'm just gonna go ahead, right click, go to add tab animation, and I am just gonna create a new animation called coin and something simple you can do is have the coin move up and down 
and spin. That's a pretty traditional way of animating coins. Um, and rather than animating each frame of this coin spinning, I'm just going to do it the lazy way inside of Unity and rotate it on the Y axis. So to do this, I'm just going to move the timeline selector to the about halfway mark for one second, about half a second in. And I'm just going to hit the record button and go ahead and change this up a little bit. Actually. So when you're animating something, rather than animating the object that the animator game object is on, you want to animate the children. So I'm going to select the sprite. And you know what, before I do any animation with the sprite, I'm just going to make the collider a child object of the sprite. So anything we do to the sprite will also have the collider following. So now with animating the sprite, I'm just going to move it up a little bit. Going over to the one second mark, I'm going to make sure that the final position is the same as the starting position. So when it loops, it looks good. And at the end, I'm also going to enter 360. Actually, let's make it negative 360. So it rotates the other way. All right. So that's how it rotates for the coin. And to make this a little more seamless, I'm going to right click I'm going to select the first keyframes, right click, and I'm going to set them to auto. Same thing with the last keyframes. So now when we play it, we got a spinning coin. So when we go back to our scene and run our game, our coins should have a little more life to them. And that is essentially all you need to know to add collectibles to your game. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, you might enjoy some of my other tutorials. Uh, link down in the description or there will be a card or some sort of end screen showing you where you can go see some of my other tutorial videos. If you like this video, go ahead and leave a like down below. Leave a comment telling me what I should do next. And thank you very much for watching. Bye.